Here's the really funny thing, guys. So basically, Chuck Norris was going to be in American Ninja in the 80s. But now you want Chuck Norris to be in the uh, reboot in his 80s. Yes, <laughs> you got it right. Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about the potential American Ninja reboot, possibly even with Chuck Norris. Also give a little bit of history on canon films. And then why Chuck Norris was never in the original American Ninja. He's actually supposed to be uh, Menachem Golan, actually wanted him to be. Uh, speaking of Chuck Norris, by the way, he actually filmed a commercial back in the day, apparently for Black Belt Cologne. Now, I don't know if that commercial was ever released or what happened to it, but... Uh, Creative Fragrances acquired the brand back in 2014. I only bring that up because I could get you an amazing discount on this fine product. You could smell amazing for the new year. All that information is linked in the description below. With that said, if you want to help support the channel, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram, by the way. Okay, so, so guys, though, so mo moving on from that, basically, that meeting was like, what, 2016, you guys said? About five years ago or so? 20, 2017, 2017. October. Yeah. The question yeah. is, why don't we have this ninja movie? Like, whatever happens? Well, there is uh, fun funding issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we started getting funding, and then um, COVID-19. You also, when we were in, uh, in, uh, in LA, you also went to meet uh, Boaz Davidson from Millennium Pictures. Right? Yes. Yeah. How much funding did you guys need? Like, what's the budget for this film? Six million dollars. Six million dollars? Like, I mean, I guess that's a pretty good budget, but did you have like no, a big star attached? Like, who was going to be the no. leader? No, 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 no big star. Did you no, have a star Michael attached? <laughs> right? We, we, we wanted Michael Dudikoff, but uh, uh, um, yeah. We wanted one to do the cough, but um, no. He didn't want to do it or what? No, it's not about him. It's about me. You don't want him? No. Well, who do you want? Like, ideally, let's say this movie gets into production next year. You got your $6 million. Obviously, you could Josh Brolin. Who do you want? Josh Brolin. Oh, jo Josh Brolin. Yeah. Wow. Okay, he's a great actor. That'd be cool, man. Mm -hmm. nice or if you know uh, you, you need to understand something the ninja in this movie is an old guy it's not a, a, a young guy okay sure and I think uh, one of my dreams is uh, Chuck Norris but I think it won't happen I think Chuck he... Norris well he's like 80 years old man yeah I know but the ninja in the movie is old. And Chuck Norris, I can tell you, uh, you know, Chuck Norris was offered to make uh, the first American ninja. And I he turned that. down. Yeah. Yeah, they have, po they have posters of it. I oh, you, I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Sure. Just a moment. Doron, if fill in the time so I can find it. I want to show David yeah. something that he's going to be a stoned. <laughs> yeah. I think I know what he's going to show you. Uh, it's kind of funny because you see, you get here the, the Israeli perspective of everything. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, you know, Israel has a lot to do with, the, with those films because I mean, Sam Furstenberg is Israeli and Menachem Golan is Israeli and Millennium Pictures in America today who did The Expendables and, all, and, and many, many other movies are Israeli. You know, uh, Avi Lerner and Boss Davidson. So we are proud that, that our little country has something to do with all of those that's uh, cool, big... Man. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And hopefully, you know, Alon is going to be a part of the American Ninja now. And Alon is very talented. And I really want him to go forward with this, with Steven and whoever is involved uh, uh, in the project. You should read the script because the script is, is really wonderful. I'm going, uh, like I said, Stephen Lambert told me months ago he would send it. Uh, you know, if he wants me to sign an NDA, whatever, more than happy to. But I, I yeah, I need to read this thing, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. 
Definitely. Can, can you uh, can you let me uh, share something? Do you see it? Oh my god. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Hey, real quick yeah, though. Look, real look quick, I heard this is Stephen Lambert's date. body with Chuck Norris's yes, face. Yes, it is. It yeah. is. This is Stephen Lambert's body from um, from Ninja Revenge of the Ninja. Okay. And uh, it, this uh, um, this was offered by Menachem Golan to Chuck Norris to start the franchise of the American Ninja. And Chuck Norris uh, turned it down because he said, my face will not be covered. My face is my, my, uh, an, my initial, my, uh, my signature. Trademark. Yeah, and trademark, signature and trademark. And I won't cover my face to be a, a ninja. And, and he turned down the, the, the part. Real quick, real quick, this poster says written by Chuck Norris and James Bruner. So did Chuck Norris write American Ninja? No. Uh, no. no. Uh, I think, you know, the, they, they, this, I is, think this is a, a demo. This is a demo that Menachem Golan uh, did. Menachem Golan was, uh, was a, a kind of a pioneer who made posters Mm-hmm. Before the movie. money, yes, he raised, he, he made posters and raised money, and then gave it to someone to write the movie, oh. and then produced it. Interesting. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. <laughs> because oh. he was working very fast, Menachem, and yeah. uh, that's what they did. He had a he had an idea. He put Chuck Norris on it, and uh, he started raising money. But Chuck Norris turned down. And then he went to um, to other options. Plus, he got Sam Finstenberg on the on the jobs. Sam set um, auditions for actors, and they chose Michael Dudikoff, who did an excellent job on the movie. Yeah, and he wasn't even a martial artist at all at the time. Yeah, he knew and- a little bit of of judo. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, as you know, Stephen Lambert did all the all the all the fights. So, so you see, David, how it came about because what what Alon is saying actually uh, it relates to what I said before. Uh, Menachem Golan, he he used to go with these posters to 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 the markets to the the Milan Film Festival or market. I don't remember. He he would sell the projects before they even produce them yeah hey it works though and it works you see it is it is working because menachem knew how the industry goes he knew he knew menachem was a genius and uh, he knew that people will buy the project will invest in those projects when they see who is the star what is the tone and what is the story about, you know, in, in a few words. Mm-hmm. It's really, you know, it's, it's a hooking project. And, you know, Chuck Norris was very famous uh, at the 80s. And, um, and that's how he sold it. But then when Chuck Norris turned down, he had to, uh, to invent the project again to stay with the money and raise more money to, to have this project. Here's the really funny thing, guys. So basically, Chuck Norris was going to be in American Ninja in the 80s. But now you want Chuck Norris to be in the uh, reboot in his 80s. Yes, <laughs> you got it right. That's funny, man. <laughs> if Chuck Norris will, will uh, agree to take this part, it's going to be a history. It's going to be something that I think Menachem would be proud of it because he really wanted him there. And I think uh, it would close a circle. It and would. in the new, the new, in the script that Stephen Lambert wrote, most of the, of the drama and some of the action is not covered with his face. So you can see his face. Oh, that's and good. And I think, and I think, you know, I, I, I sent an email to Boaz when, when I, I wanted him to fund. I wanted, yeah, you know, be a partner in this project, <laughs> his company. 
And um, I told him that Chuck Norris is, uh, is a good option. What'd he um, think? Well, I don't know. He never answered me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was it? We were in his office. We talked about this project, but I think he wasn't, he wasn't available for, for this kind of project because he was busy with, uh, with other projects. And there was, uh, it was the time of this, um, I, don't, I don't remember the name. Hellboy, maybe, no? Yes, it was Hellboy, right. Oh, really? Hellboy. Okay. And, and just, and the, the assassin, assassin Guard, how do you call it, this movie with uh, Samuel L. Jackson and... Uh, oh, uh, Ryan Reynolds? And oh, the Ryan, Hitman's Bodyguard or something like that? The Hitman Bodyguard, yes. Mm, he, okay. It, it, it was just going to come out. And then Hellboy. And I think, I think Buzz wasn't interested at that moment uh, with uh, a ninja project. Okay. You know, he never, he never, he never say yes or no. He, he, he just, you know, he just put it on the hold. This is on. Hey man, at least he keeps the possibility open, you know, cause you never know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that'd be cool if this movie did get made though. Yeah. It will be very cool if this movie will get, because it's going to be um, a very unique movie because Steven, Steven, wrote something, he wrote it with another guy, Bobby uh, Yank. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to uh, give him a credit because he was a co-writer here. And, and you know, they crafted a really serious uh, 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 script that will put the ninja in a place that nobody ever thought about. Wow. And when wow. David, when Steven will give you to read the script, you will understand what I'm saying. It's a different type of ninja. That's cool, man. And it's a shame that, they, you know, uh, there is not enough funding to do it. Yet. Hey, if Yet. you don't mind me asking, man, like how much did you raise? So if you guys need six million to make this, did you guys get at least half that or what? No, no, we haven't got no? half. We got uh, more than a bit more than a million, but uh, oh, okay. doesn't it's still a long ways anywhere. to go, though. No, no. It doesn't take us anywhere. Mm, yeah. Uh, the industry stuff, you know, anyway. Yeah, that's the biggest roadblock, man. Anyway, I'm, st I'm, I'm, I'm uh, directing and producing other movies. And I hope, uh, you know, uh, one of my movies will get uh, very far. And some people will ask me what you're going to do next. And here you have it. That's my next, my next thing. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Like, say the movie you're working on now is a big hit, then you'll just have investors, oh, you need six million for this ninja movie? Here you go, right? Shut up and take my money. Should be a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Even though the industry today, to be honest with you, uh, I don't, you can, I think you can turn the, the screen, you can turn it off. Yeah, I was going to say, let's get Chuck out of here. I think that the industry... <laughs> because how, I think, uh, how Chuck is doing told... it? How, how is he doing it? He's everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, you know, we can't. Like, he's powerful, man. <laughs> yes, he Even is. He's Chuck powerful. Is, uh, and it... more awesome. I think that the industry today uh, is, um, you know, a ninja movie today, you... <laughs> it's ambitious to make. Uh, yes. Uh, because we're not in the eighties and not in the nineties and, and um, it really has to be good. And the story has to be strong, I think. And the script has it, you know, you just need to find the, 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 the right funding and the right producers to believe in the project. And um, you, you also have to remember that the American Ninja uh, franchise, it has a lot of fans, you know, a lot of people, almost like Bloodsport, I think a lot of people grew up on these movies. Mm -hmm. uh, that Sam did. Uh, so they need to take in consideration this fact as well, you know. But you're not using the actual property, American Ninja, right? Like, yes, I don't... we are not using the. Actual yeah, okay. Movie. So it's just gonna be called Ninja: The Resurrection, right? Or yeah, like, like an homage yeah. to the to the old ones. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's but cool, that man. could that can be changed, you know. Uh, everything can go uh, in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. MGM suddenly will say, "Okay, uh, we, we saw the movie, we like it. Let's put it on the franchise. Let's revive this, 
crazy stuff because it's really crazy this franchise yeah it wouldn't be a bad idea for them to do because then they could start putting out special editions of the um the old american ninja films right when you get this new kind of reboot pseudo sequel out if they want to use the the title yeah it's happening anyway you know when they start making blu-rays in europe and they uh, and the um, companies start buying uh, the the license to uh, publish blu-rays of the the old uh, canon films that belong now to uh, mgm, um, MGM mm-hmm. it's revived again the genre yeah and sure of sam Sam was uh, was uh, invited to all sorts of festivals and shows and uh, radio shows and TV shows and and also you know a, a few months ago in Israel Tarantino was mentioning uh, Sam Fistenberg and his uh, Ninja the Domination he was saying yeah. it's one of one of his 10 movies that he loves and he has uh, a real He has, uh, uh, you know, the, the original reels of the films. And he, the saw it, and he saw it seven times in the theater when it came out because he was crazy about it. So think about it. Yeah, Sam- it's, it's an interesting movie, man. The, the third one with the uh, ninjas, aerobics, and uh, possession mm-hmm. kind of tying everything that was popular back then into one unique package. <laughs> yeah, but that's Menachem crazy's, you know, Menachem's crazy ideas. You know, he, he's a great guy, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doron, Doron and me, uh, we, we had a chance to talk to him. Doron, more than me, I think he had an interview with him. Yeah. I was just visiting him, asking him a few questions about scripts and stuff like that. He was really at his, uh, you know, old and he was nice to people and people, you know, from the Israeli industry who came to him and asked him for help and questions and reading scripts and stuff like that he would do it no yeah. question asked that's cool he yeah. gave his heart to cinema until the end exactly such a i don't know it's kind of a god for some people sure. yeah yeah